Hello YouTube, what is going on? Captainic88 here, and in this video we are going to be going over how to do 2D shapes sync in Panzo Clipmaker 2. So let's just fire it up. Um, and I have a song. It's the song that I used in the, the previous previous intro. We're actually going to do this. Ready? So we're going to grab the desktop audio and crank it up a bit so you guys can hear it a little bit better. So that's the song we're going to go with. We used that in the previous one of the previous videos. So um, to sync our shapes, it's going to be very complicated, this method, but it's very, very effective and it looks very, very nice. So what you're going to do is what I would recommend. You create a group and you call it S1. S1 stands for square one and um, that's what I go by. So add a shape rectangle and drag that into square one. Next, go to custom roughness and and these uh, shapes are actually in my um, my 5k pack so if you guys want to go check that out go to my um, my 5k pack video where I released them um, you can do the exact same animations that I'm doing in here so you go to the texture and you go to my pack and shapes uh, I have multiple ones but I like this one a lot it just looks very simple and nice um, and you're, you're gonna set this to point two and I'll show you guys why at first it's gonna look hella weird but then it's gonna it's gonna come together at the end so um, don't don't leave too soon because you're gonna miss out on how to make it look super super nice so the first step you're gonna do is you're gonna set the square one to zero you don't have to uh, manipulate the last setting but you want to set the first two to um to zero zero or um point zero zero one point zero zero one but um you can't you can't actually go to zero so that's the minimum value but by going to zero it'll go to that so you want to go here so you want to go to the first explosion um so to speak and you want to have the group selected and you're going to go um three back so one two three i'm pretty sure it's three it's actually two it's one two one two back and then you're going to add a scale like that have it set to i don't know what it's called uh the interpolation to the static one the sharp one and then you want to set this to none i don't think it really matters but i i just recommend setting it to none you're going to go two over and then you're going to go another two over so those keyframes at the bottom and then you're going to add another one so this is going to go to point and this is going to straight up go to three and the interpolation doesn't matter anymore um, and just keep it linear so it'll look like this and then you're just gonna basically keep on going out through the intro just doing that method so you're gonna go so you're gonna go here and you're gonna go one two right but now it doesn't matter so you can leave it and then go one two one two and then that goes to four so it's not gonna look like much is happening right now but uh, stuff is actually happening. So ne the next one we're going to select is going to be 6. And I believe after 6 it closes. So then you want to have... At, right after the, the 6th, you want to change the interpolation. Set it to none. Make it zero, 0, again. Right like that. And I guess that's all we're going to do. But in, in reality, you would keep going and then you would the um, duplicating uh, the, the group and rearranging all the keyframes would actually become a lot harder. But I'll show you how to do it here and I'll, I'll create uh, a couple more shapes to, to demonstrate. So you're going to go to the rectangle, right? You actually go to the group and go to where it begins. So the, the first keyframe, um, it should be at zero, zero. And then you're going to go to... Um, scale right make the interpolation that and the make it none okay and then you're going to go back to the, the original group and then have it go to the second to last keyframe of this um this set these this is basically a set right here so make it go to the second to last one there and then have it go to um the scale go to 0.65 I think that's I 
Unless I'm mistaken, and it's supposed to go higher. Which I don't think it is. Um... Oh, that's right, that's right. The size of the rectangle has to be 80. That's what I forgot to change. That's why it looks so weird. But this is correct. So it looks like that. Which looks hella nice. So that's what you do. You go 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to, um, to 0.65. Sorry I didn't mention that. That is That would be such a big problem. Um, if, if I didn't change it, but that's those are the numbers, okay? And then you're gonna go to the, to the keyframe after, so it aligns with this double keyframe, and then you're going to you're gonna uh, change the interpolation and set it to none, and make it back to point two. And then you would obviously continue on going. So basically, this is like the restart, and then you would continue continue making them. So duplicate square one. Because this, this set that I created is actually a three set, so you need three different shapes, um, three different squares if you want to have that flow. So next what you're going to do is you're going to go here, and this is what I like to do. I like to create rotations on where the um, the keyframe is going to go and how I'm going to change it, and I'll, I'll show you how, how this is going to play out in a second. So you know two of these, right? So you go boom. And then you just add the third one wherever it goes. So go there and then go one, two, like that. And then you add that rotation. So next you can grab all of these layers, okay? And then just drag it so that it lines up. And hold shift, hold shift. Click the ones that are lined up. And then move, drag the ones that aren't lined up. Um, and then you can click them all. And then it, everything's lined lined up beautifully you can delete these layers now next you can go into um, the rectangle group and realign the um, I'll just zoom in a bit realign these values and boom now you've two so let's see how this looks and that looks really nice so now let's create the third one because this, like I said, the set has three. Okay, and you're basically going to do exactly what I said the last time. So you're just going to add those little keyframes. These aren't even, you're not going to keep these rotation keyframes. They actually have no purpose whatsoever. It's just a little marker to tell you where you're going to move the keyframes. And um, it's very, it's a lot easier that way. So I definitely recommend doing it that way. Um, I think it's just a hell of a ton easier to do so now you're just going to kind of come along see this didn't line up that time and neither did this one so now it's all good um go to the beginning go to this rectangle uh oops my bad and just move these scales over now this is a keyframing process so this rectangle would also have multiple um sets so this would be a set um, and that set would correspond with this set and you basically just keep adding more um, of the same pattern so to speak if I hope that makes sense I don't want to sound confusing um, but it, it, like I said this is very complicated to do it takes time and you have to really think of it think a lot so we just completed the whole thing now let's say that this was the whole intro right we we did this whole process multiple times throughout the end right um let's play it and see how it turned out and in full speed and i thought that looked really really nice see that's what it looks like and that looks that's what makes it look super super cool and if you want to guys you can also add some really cool um shapes or like um barriers i guess i don't know like like that that's so that's so big I guess uh, four jesus right you can you can <laughs> you can position these throughout the whole entire um let's just let's just create a new group
I don't actually do this much in my intros, but I may start doing it. Blockers, so you're just going to kind of duplicate it, right, and you're going to drag it down. I don't actually have a specific value. What would the top be? Like, hmm. Like, I don't know what this would be. That's 44. So if we're going down by fours, well... Okay, so then this would be 36, 32, 28, 24, 20. Oh, wait. No, we got to go down by eights. That's right. Oops. My bad. But you kind of get what I'm trying to get at here. Um, go down by eight. Jesus. I think it's 24, isn't it? Come 16. Eight. Zero. And then you can kind of just boom, 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 boom. And now I can just make them negative. So there you go. A little little cheat right there. Duplicate the positive ones. And then you can just see what the numbers are and you don't even have to think about it. You just turn them all negative. Like that. Just drag them all into the group so it looks hella nice. And then expand this a little bit so I can show you. Now we're gonna make them all uh, black colored. So they uh, match the background. Now, in reality, they wouldn't. Well, they could be. If you're, um, the background of your intro is black, then you'd obviously want the, the color to be black so that it, it appears that it's just the animation of the squares. If your background's white, you want these to obviously be white. Um, whatever color your background is, it'll uh, change how this looks. So let's see how this looks. I've actually never done this before, so I don't even know how this is going to look. I don't even have. And that didn't even work. And I don't even know why that didn't work. Does this have to be set to one? Is that what? Is that what? Yeah, it is. Okay. So let's see. Check that out. Yeah, and you can get something like that. That looks hella nice. So you can do a whole bunch of different things like this. Like that. Um, very simple. That's how you do a, um, a shape sync in Panzoid Clip Maker 2. If you guys enjoyed that video, that very complicated long video, let me know down in the comment section. Comment any tutorials you want to see for next week. And until next time, guys, peace and bye bye.